In this presentation, we're going to record the completion of a job and the invoicing related to that job. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our job costing company dashboard. We're going to open up our Excel file to see what our objective will be. So we're over here in our Excel file. We're going to be completing a job here. We have the transfer job to finish goods and then complete it. So let's consider what we're talking about up top. So if we go back on up top, we are considering our job, job number 14 that has now been completed. So if I go over to our job sheet here, this job, we're going to say it's, it's been completed and we're going to and we're going to finish it up and bill for it in essence. So that job is done. What does that mean in terms of the journal entries? Well, in terms of a journal entry, note that we haven't been tracking this through the work in process and the finished goods, but rather recording this information basically to cost a good sold and then supporting it over here with the job cost sheet. So what we don't have to do at this point in time is go through the work in process and transfer it possibly to finish goods and then record the decrease in the inventory type of item uh, and, the, and the related cost of goods sold because we've already recorded it in the cost of goods sold. If you want more examples or explanation on those two methods of recording this information, you can take a look at our example problem we'll provide at the end here on you know the two basic methods that you could or different methods you could use for the job costing and supporting of it, uh, this information with the job cost sheets. But at this point in time, that basically means then that we just re need to record kind of like the service side of the invoice. So on the service side of the invoice, we're gonna say that uh, sales are going to be increasing. We're gonna record basically an invoice. The other side is gonna be going to the accounts receivable. So that's gonna be fairly straightforward. That's gonna be uh, the invoicing process. We're gonna use the costs that have been accumulated, which are adding up to the 191-140 to help us generate the invoice. Now note that these costs over here aren't what we're gonna bill exactly because that's obviously the costs and we're gonna be marking them up. We're gonna mark them up by 30%. So we'll say, hey, this is our actual costs. We're gonna mark it up by 30%. Also note that you might have different ways that you bill somebody. You might be using an estimate and say, hey, this is a hard estimate. It is what it is. We're gonna bill you at the end of this for that estimate. Or, and you might change the estimate and whatnot as you go. Or you might say, hey, this is an estimate and we're actually going to bill you on the actual costs, which is what we will do here, plus some type of markup, which we're going to say is going to be a 30% markup. And that's what we're going to do uh, with this transaction. So the actual journal entry is just going to be increasing the accounts receivable, uh, increase in the sales. We're then going to have to support that information with the job cost. Now, we also want to note with the job cost system, it's going to be going from open to now being closed. This job is now closed. It's closed. Uh, it has been closed or it will be closing in the, the current time period. So when we're trying to match up our cost of goods sold to say the, 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 the work in process ledgers over here, we, we need to basically know when the item was closed. Was it closed in the current year or not closed in, in the current year? So we want to be able to see if we can mark that off in our system right because this cost of goods sold down here is including the jobs the activity for the jobs that were open uh in in the current time period so we want to keep that in mind as we run our job reports so in essence we're going to make the invoice we're going to take everything that was billed and we're going to mark it up by 30 percent so let's see how we can do that in uh zero over here so we're going to go back on over to zero i'm going to do this by going into the project so we're actually going to go into the projects we're going to go into the project that was closed, that being project number 14. So let's go into project number 14. There's our cost of the 191, 140. We would like to create an invoice based on those, those actual costs that are in there at this point in time, which you can see down below. I'm going to do that with the invoicing item up top, and I want to invoice tasks and expenses. So I'm going to invoice tasks and expenses. And notice it's taking all the items that we have incurred thus far and we can basically make an invoice with them. So we're gonna take, these are the actual costs that we're gonna be pulling over. So we're gonna check all those off. You can uncheck any, any of them you don't want to pick up. You can see that amount is coming up to the 191, uh, 140. And then it says uh, save draft or save and open draft invoice. Let's save and open the invoice. Now here we have it. Now notice it's going to customer one because this is a job or project related to customer one. I'm going to make the date is going to be going to January. So let's bring this on back to January 31st. So we'll pick that up on January 31st due date. Let's go ahead and say due date is in February. Let's say February 29th. 
So we'll pick that up invoice number. So that looks good. And then we of course have all of our information uh, down below with regards to the items. So all these items have been pulled in now so we can give the really the detail of the invoicing. And you could do this of course as you go as well. You could do progress invoicing as you go and generate this this information as you go and say say here's the invoice and you can either collect like for example you might collect i'm just recurring my costs until the end possibly and then and then bill up the 30 percent at the end of the project or maybe you bill the the cost plus the 30 percent as you go you know however you want to do it but notice how this can help you to populate your your expenses down here then we need to add a line for the markup so that we're going to have i'm just going to call it markup which is going to be the 30 percent markup so i'm just going to be taking then that 191 140 so let's pull up the trusty calculator let me get the trusty calculator and so we're going to say this is going to be the 191 uh 140 times 0.3 and that's going to be the 57 342 57 342 so we're going to pick that up here we'll say this is going to be five seven three four two five seven three four two so there we have that so now the invoice amount is going to be at the 248 482 does that match what we have in our excel worksheet uh yeah the 248 482 so that looks good so when we record this then what's going to happen increase the accounts receivable by the 248 482 and uh the other side then going to revenue uh revenue so let's say and notice it's doing that why is it how is it able to do that it's pulling the other side. All of these accounts are pulling to that one revenue account. You can see here, except this overhead, which seems to have a problem. It's going to, <laughs> it's going to the cost of goods sold account. We may need to change that. This should be going to revenue. Let's go ahead and put this to revenue. And that means I set up that double-sided item to the wrong account. But in any case, bottom line is we set up all the double-sided items to be going to the revenue account. And we should have been setting them up to go to the revenue account. And so when, when we create the invoice on that, this is using the second side of the double-sided or two-sided items we set up. It's, they're all going to the income account here. So we're able to use these same items, which we used when we created the expense side. And now we're using them to pull over to the revenue side to help us with the billing process. All right, did I mess anything else up? And also note at this point in time that you could, we only have them all going to one revenue account but you could imagine you made those double-sided items to differentiate between revenue possibly you put you know revenue breaking it out between uh the direct materials the overhead and and so on uh you could you could break it out in that fashion if you so choose just remember you don't want to get carried away with the number of revenue accounts typically you will you want to have fewer revenue accounts typically and group them together but you can do though that by when you set up the double-sided items changing the revenue items there okay let's go ahead and save this we're going to approve this and uh, then we'll take a look at the old financial statements so let's approve that okay and then we're going to go into the accounting drop down and we want to go into the balance sheet so we'll go accounting balance sheet we'll take a look at the current year so this is going to be january 31st and then we'll update that report and then if we scroll down, we've got now, of course, the accounts uh, receivable now at that 248.482. So the accounts receivable has now shown up. Let's go ahead and right click on this report on this tab up top and duplicate this tab and then go back to the tab to the left so that we can then open the income statement. So scrolling back up, going to the accounting drop down, we want to then take a look at the income statement. So then within the income statement, we then have the revenue. And again, notice it's in one account up here. We just have the revenue account for sales, whereas the cost of goods sold, we broke it out between those components. So then if we go into the sales item, uh, we can then see the detail of it. We can drill down in on it, and then we can go back to the invoice that we have created by then scrolling down and, and clicking on one of these items within the sales item. Now note the sales item is, is picking up all of the items. It picked it up item by item, even though you know we only had, these are all coming from the one invoice, which you can see indicated by the invoice number here. So if I select any of these items, in other words, it'll take us to the one invoice that's including all of these items that are on that one invoice. So here it is, here's the actual invoice. And just note that if you needed to, to go in and adjust this at, at a later point, then you can go to the drop down here and edit the invoice. So that's gonna be it for now, let's get out of here.